There are plenty of men who are good at killing. I have known some of them, said Mesca. You are not like them. In their wildest dreams, they could never be as good at killing as you. You don't know that. Mezca leaned closer. I do know. I have seen you. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lightsome. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hemvar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of G. Owen Ware's Daughter of Agonies. Daughter of Agonies is a 2021 novel by G. Owen Ware's. It is the sequel to the Pellucid or Pellucid, however you say it, which. So thus the story of Krill continues, this time in relation to the story of Mezca, a former slave girl now in a whole new world. Uh, it isn't a very kind one, by the way. Far in the future, the Earth has a single continent under a red sun, like Clark Ash and Zothique. Uh, Krill has a symbiotic relationship with a mushroom substance that acts as armor. Overall, this is very much a weird, dying Earth, sword and sorcery world, which it's just so right up my alley, and I'm so glad to have read this book, honestly. I think most of, uh, well, a lot of the people who watch my channel are Short and Sorcerer fans, and you guys should definitely read this. Where's seems to really not be popular at all, but honestly, I, I think he deserves more um, attention, at least in Sword and Sorcery circles. Um, he and the girl, Mezca, go through a forest of cacti before happening upon a, a settlement, which looks abandoned but isn't quite... They search for someone, and we are shown this all, not told it, of course. And Wares does an excellent job putting us into this weird world. Um, the place we are this time is different than the first book, and it's rather interesting, just like the place in the first book. A, a sign language is used to express simple things like understanding, you know, yes and no. Uh, the Daughter of Agonies, this title refer refers to, is actually another name for scorpions, though, as well. The story is brutal and dark, uh, there's good action in a fantastic setting. I really like the duo of Krill uh, with a companion, because uh, he doesn't have one in the first book. It adds to the story uh, and the humor and the conversation, and definitely seeing um, the culture we get from Mezca as she uh, communicates in a different way than he does. Uh, he, he doesn't really communicate all that much at all, sometimes he's kind of a silent type, I guess. He gets more development out of it though, and um, she is well, a good character as well. We already know. Uh, it is his physical capabilities, um, you know, that help him survive, but can he provide the necessities of life for someone else? Um, we also get a caste system. Um, we get poverty and those uh, with great riches, all while uh, Krill looks for, a, well, a man. Uh, hints of things old are around, and hints of big events going on, the, on at the edge of things, and on the edge of the story, make their way in. Uh, there is some content involving nudity and sex, like the last one. There's a lovely Eldritch quality, even more so than the first one. Uh, Wares hardly tells you anything. Actions and dialogue show us an expert, pithy manner, and there's very little um, in the way of inner thoughts. We get to much of the world um, since the first largely was in one location. This one is about travel throughout a particular desert. We also get more of the deviants and their forms. Uh, the deviants, again, they're not really a specific race, but anyone that looks abnormally not human but are still human, kind of mutants, I guess maybe would be a good way of describing them. Uh, one problem could um, uh, pertain, I feel like, to this um, to this intro I mentioned, actually, as I read it. It's like, Krill is a great at killing, exceptionally so, and you don't fear for him. Uh, you, you always fear for his enemies, of course, which isn't really a problem. Uh, sure, Mezca could potentially come to harm, but he's just so good. And I don't find this really to hinder my enjoyment of the story. In this case, as, you know, I, I don't really ever fear for Conan either. So, um, but anyways, that's just something that some people might not enjoy. Uh, this lack of fear we have for Krill. So anyways, um, you should go read Daughter of Agonies or The Pellucid Witch first. Uh, and I definitely am looking forward to reading more of Wares. This is my second novel by him. I read a third one right afterwards, and I have a fourth one kind of on standby, so we'll see when I get to that. Anyways, uh, and I think there actually is going to be a third book in this series, but as of right now, it's just these two. So hopefully that third book does come about. Leave from Liam's Lyceum. I will catch you next time. Thank you.